Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel, and I'm now on question number 12 from the May June 2020 um, International well, GCSE, IGCSE, Cambridge Paper 4 Extended uh, 0580 syllabus. This is Paper 4, Variant 3. This is a question um, 12, Part A, 1. Where it's telling us to um, telling us about this curve, which is a cubic curve, y equals four x cubed minus three x plus three. We got to find the coordinates of the two stationary points on this curve. Okay, so this is one of those new topics which just started actually in the same year that this exam was set. That was the first time that such a questions appeared in the um, for this new syllabus from 2020 onwards. And this question is about differentiation. All right, where you have to basically um, find the, in this particular question, say find the two stationary points. So they're telling you there's two stationary points. And a stationary point is a place or a point at which the curve has a zero gradient where it turns. And um, prior to having studied differentiation, really we should have studied, um, you know, graphs of functions. And one of the graphs that we should know about how it looks and how to sketch is the cubic curve. So if we know how this curve looks, that will help us to understand, you know, what's happening in the question. And this is a cubic curve. Um, how do we know it's a cubic curve? Well, because the highest power that you see is a power of three. Okay, so the cubed is the highest power. So this is a cubic curve. And a cubic curve can either have the shape where it goes up and then down and then up again, or it can have the shape where it goes down and then up and then down again. And what determines these two uh, shapes is the coefficient of x cubed. If the coefficient of x cubed is positive, it will have this shape. If it's negative, it will have this shape. And we can see the coefficient of x cubed is positive 4. So therefore, this is the shape that this curve is going to have. And the stationary points are the points at which the gradient is going to be 0. So if we were to draw a tangent that's horizontal, it's going to touch the curve at this point and also at this point, the places where it turns. So the stationary points are the places where the two stationary points on this particular curve are the places where it turns, which is this and this. So that's what we're trying to find, the coordinates of those two points. That's what we're trying to find in this question. All right, so now, to find the stationary points, we use the fact that the stationary points have a gradient of zero. The gradient of the curve at the stationary point is zero because, you know, you can see that the tangent of the curve at that point will be horizontal, which is a line of zero gradient. So we know that at the stationary points, so we know at the stationary points, okay, the, the gradient is zero. And the gradient, what is the gradient given by? Well, the gradient is given by the expression that you find after you have differentiated the function, which is called dy dx. dy dx, okay, so if we, we know that y is equal to 4x cubed minus 3x plus 3. If we find dy dx, now dy dx is what you find when you differentiate this expression. When you differentiate it, what you have to do is you multiply the coefficient of x by the power. So that's 3 times 4, which is 12. And then you take 1 from the power after you've done that. So 3, uh, 4x cubed becomes four x cubed becomes 12x squared. Now minus 3x, that becomes negative 3 the x is dropped, okay, and the constant is also comes zero, basically. And the reason for that, just in case you're not sure why did that happen, if you think about 3x, it's like 3x to the power of 1. And if you differentiate that, you multiply by the power, so you end up with 3 times 1, which is 3, and then you take 1 from the power, so you have x to the power of 0. And we know from the laws of indices that anything to the power of 0 is equal to 1. So this is equivalent to 3 times 1, which is 3. So 3 to the power of x becomes 3 when you differentiate it. And why, why is the constant become 0? Well, we can think about it in two ways. One way you can see, like, if you, if you were to draw the line y equals 3, any constant, it would be a horizontal line, and that line has a gradient of 0. So the gradient of y equals 3 is 0, okay? Because we've basically taken each of these separately and, and differentiated them. Alternatively, you can think of 3, three as exactly this, 3x to the power of 0. This is 3 is equal to that, if you think about it in terms of x, as we've shown here. And if you try to differentiate that, you have to multiply the coefficient by 0. Well, that's just going to give you 0 anyway, whatever happens. right? 0 times the coefficient of 0, it's going to be 0 times whatever else is there, it's going to give you 0. So any constant term 
it basically gets dropped, becomes zero. Any x term, which is x to the power of one, you drop the x, and everything else is like you're multiplying by the power and taking one from the power. So that's what dy dx um, is, and we know that the you know <clears throat> the gradient is dy dx, so dy dx is equal to zero. So we have to solve the equation. 2x squared minus 3 is equal to 0. So we've got to find the values of x that make this true. So when you um, subtract 3 from both sides, you have 12x squared equals 3. 12x squared equals 3. And then x squared equals 3 over 12. So x squared equals 1 over 4. So now we want to find what x is. Now we got to take the square root of both sides of this equation. We can have... that's x squared is equal, sorry, x, we've got to take the square root, so x is equal to, now when you take the square root of something, you can have either the positive or negative square root of that thing. So x is going to be plus or minus a half. The square root of a quarter is a half. So we know x is equal to positive or negative a half. Now we've got to find what y is when x equals positive a half, and what y is when x is negative a half, and then we'll have the, coefficient, the, the coordinates of the turning points. So we have a half, and we have negative a half. So when x is equal to positive a half, we can say y is equal to 4 times a half cubed minus 3 times a half plus 3. We could just stick that in our calculator if we want to, but I I'll just do this. A, a, a half cubed is 1 over 8. So it's 4 times 1 over 8 minus 3 over 2 plus 3. Now 4 over 8 is a half minus 3 over 2 plus 3, a half minus 3 over 2, that's going to give you minus 2 over 2, which is minus 1, minus 1 plus 2, plus 3 is 2. So when um, x equals a half, y equals 2. And when x equals negative a half, you have y equals 4 times negative a half cubed, minus 3 times negative a half plus 3. So y is going to be, this is going to be minus 1 over 8, all right, so you're going to get the same thing, but negative will be minus a half, because 4 times minus 1 over 8. And it's going to be plus 3 over 2 this time, and then plus 3. So that's going to give you 3 minus uh, 1 is uh, minus 1 is 2. So 2 over 2, which is 1. 1 plus 3 is 4. So when x is equal to negative a half, y is equal to 4. And we have our two um, stationary points. Okay, a half and 2, and negative a half and 4. And there's the answer to part A1. Okay, so <clears throat> that's how you find the stationary points. You basically take the gradient of the function and make it equal to zero. So you find the gradient of the function by finding dy dx, and you make that equal to zero, and then you differentiate. Uh, well, once you found the gradient function, you, you make it equal to zero. Then you find the values, or you solve that equation that you found, and that will give you the value or values of x where the gradient is zero, and then you find the y-coordinates for each of those x-coordinates to find the coordinates of the stationary points. Now, then it says, determine whether each of your stationary points is a maximum or a minimum. Give reasons for your answers. Okay, so now, so far we started off with y equals, we started off with y equals 4x cubed, and it was minus 3x plus 3. Okay, 4x cubed minus 3x plus 3. And we found what dy dx was, which was a gradient function, which was 12x squared minus 3. Okay, and we also determined that the graph has this kind of rise, fall, rise type of shape, and we've just found the coordinates of these two points, the stationary points. So obviously this is the stationary point where x equals negative a half, because it's before this one where x equals a half. We think about the number line this is where x equals a half this is where x equals negative a half so if you were to draw the graph that's how you know it would look that negative a half x equals negative a half would come before x equals a half now so we can see from the graph that the maximum which is the maximum means the local maximum means the area the, the place where the graph reaches its highest value in that particular region this maximum here this turning point which where it turns downwards, it goes to a higher, highest value, then it starts going down again. That's called a maximum, this is called a minimum. So we got to determine whether each of these points is a maximum or a minimum. Now we can see very clearly that minus a half and four is a maximum. And we can determine very clearly that a half and two is a minimum, because we know the shape of the curve. 
right? So we can tell that very easily by just looking at the first one, the first, the lowest x coordinate is going to be the maximum, and the second one is going to be the minimum. Okay, so we can determine that by the shape of the curve. Now, many times a question says, use calculus to determine. Or they'll give you a type of function which is not easy for you to, to sketch, or you, you don't know the sketch of it very easily. So it's not easy, it's not that easy for you to determine from the sketch, which is a maximum minimum. So you should always, um, you know, I advise you always to use this method where you use calculus, meaning you use differentiation to find which is a maximum or a minimum. Okay, so now we know that this is called the, the first differential. This tells you the gradient, or basically the rate of change of y with respect to x, how y changes with respect to x. This is what this gradient function means. It tells you how fast or you know y is changing as x is changing, basically. Then you have something called the second differential, which is called d squared y dx squared, which is basically the rate of change of the gradient. It's telling you how the gradient is changing. Okay, and if you take a, if you take the second differential, if you differentiate this, you know the gradient function. So you differentiate this, and then you're doing it again. You're going to get two times twelve, which is twenty-four times x to the power of one. This is the the this is the gradient of the gradient. This tells you how the gradient is changing, and we can see here that when you get a maximum point the gradient is changing from a positive value to a negative value. So the gradient is starting off high. If you think about it, if you took the if you took the, the tangent at this point, it will be, give you a big gradient. And as you go along, the gradient gets less and less until it becomes zero. And then the gradient becomes negative. So we can see that a maximum point, when you have a maximum point, the second differential, which is the rate of change of the gradient, is going to be less than zero is going to be negative because the gradient is decreasing the gradient is decreasing so whenever you have um you know a situation where you have a maximum point you can think the gradient is going from bigger to smaller to smaller to zero to less than zero to negative so the gradient is actually decreasing as you go along so the rate of change of the gradient will be negative when you have a maximum and you see when you have a minimum the gradient is you know, it's starting off going, you know, it's, it's, it's negative, but it's getting less and less negative. So, for example, it might be minus 2, minus 1, minus a half. Then the gradient becomes 0. At this point, the gradient becomes 0, and then the gradient becomes positive after that. So when you have a minimum point, the gradient is going from, it's going from like, um, decreasing to increasing. It's, it's actually increasing the whole time. It's going from negative to 0 to positive. So at a minimum point... The second differential, the rate of change of the gradient, will always be greater than zero, which would be a positive. So all we have to do is take our values of our points, which were, um, you had minus a half and two, and four, sorry, and you had a half and two. Okay, and we, we substitute the values of x into the second differential, so d squared y, dx squared is going to be 24 times negative a half, which is um, minus 12. And we can say, therefore, you're going to have when x equals negative a half, okay, you have a negative value for d squared. You can say, therefore, as the second differential d squared y dx squared is less than zero, it's negative. Therefore, we have a maximum. So I know that this is a maximum as we determined by just looking at the graph. And when, I, when you got this point, a half two, the second differential d, d, squared y, d squared y dx squared is going to give you 24 times positive a half, because that's the coordinate there, which gives you positive 12. So therefore, as the second differential for this point is greater than zero, it's positive, therefore we have a minimum, as we determine a minimum is when the second differential is greater than zero. So we can say that therefore we can say minus a half and four is a maximum, and a half and two is a minimum and we have answered the question that's two ways of finding the gradient one is uh, finding the uh, the na nature of the stationary point sometimes they say find the stationary points find the the coordinates and nature of the stationary points whether they're maximums or minimums but here you know, we have two ways. One is by looking at the shape of the graph. And drawing this would be enough for, for them to realize that you understand that the, you can say that the min, here the, the maximum is before the minimum. Something like that, because you know the shape of the curve. That's fine. And here you're going to have this other method where you use the second differential. Okay. And most of the time, 
they would expect you to do this second method, especially where it says in the question, uh, using calculus, determine the stage points. And this works really only with the type of curves which you can. This method works with the type of curves which you know what they look like. You, you, you learn how they turn and how they look and what determines their shape. So, you know, that, that works for this, but sometimes you might get a curve which you don't know what it looks like, so you, you'll be forced to use this, this method here, which I used over here. Okay, so that's 12, part A of this question from May, June 2022. I hope that was clear. Other questions you might want to watch from this particular um, paper can be found in the playlist that will appear somewhere over here. Other questions about differentiation can be found in the playlist which will appear in this region over here. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. Thank you for watching and see you soon.